Okay, today we're working on a 2000 model Fleetwood Southwind with the IntelliTech uh, climate control system. Now, this if you have this system, what it does is it you know allows you to have two ACs but only have a 30 amp power source. Okay, so you can usually you have to have 50 to do that, and um, this allows load shedding, so it will shed that front AC. That's the variable right and uh, keep the uh, rear AC so if you run a microwave or whatever um, it you know which would draw more than 30 amps or put a higher load it'll turn that front AC off which you won't really notice until the load's gone and then it'll fire it back up again it also won't run both ACs at the same time all right so my problem was is my my generator um, had no output um, and it just happened all of a sudden but I had shore power could run full ACs but my generator would only run, I'm trying to remember now, I've fought so much with this. Um, the wiring diagrams are total crap. Um, but they helped. They did steer me in the right direction. All right, so I had to find my load transfer switch. Okay, so behind this panel, I'll show you in a second, is a load transfer switch, or it looks like a load transfer switch, but it's not. It's part of the IntelliTech uh, system, and it's for load shedding. Um, but it looks just like a transfer switch. So when you see that, you'll think, oh, that's my transfer switch. That's what I did. Guess what? It wasn't. Um, and like I said, the wiring diagrams will lead you down a rabbit hole. They're decent, kind of as a general guideline, but don't, don't put a lot of faith in them. There's stuff that's not in them. Or, well, hidden very well and not explained. Um, and no diagram additional to show that. At least what I have. All right, so this is your fuse panel. This is your 120 circuit breaker uh, box right um nothing's on all right um everything here is off right so all right so that comes out with a screw and then behind your 12 volt panel here there there who would have ever found that i started with where i had power and where i didn't and uh just chased it until i found a load transfer switch all right so um and i'm gonna show you real quick how one works um, if you buy one online, don't be surprised if you buy a bad one. Happened to me. All right. So I buy a load transfer switch that I think I'm replacing the IntelliTech one that's under the, not the one there, but the one behind it that I'll show you in a second. I haven't showed you yet. Um, I think I'm buying that. Well, so I buy this and it's got a little cover. It looks like that, right? That's exactly what the one inside there looks like. Um, so I think that's it. Well, I'll order it. Guess what? That's a standard load transfer switch with a time delay circuit. I'm like, well, it's not really what I'm supposed to get. Try to return it. Guy won't talk to me. Okay, fine. Well, once I find that load transfer switch, I realize I need this transfer switch. So I wire it up. And the way this works is like this. All right, so if this is your shore power, right? And these are your circuit breakers or your power out to the RV, then that means in its natural state, see, it is connected. So anytime that those two are touching, it's connected. You would have to energize this coil to connect the other side, right? Okay. So we've established this is shore power. Let's say these are gen power, right? And then you have a jumper wire that goes from your gen to your coil. So when the gen starts and energizes the coil, it changes the context from shore power to gen power. Ding! And output to the fuse box. Very simple how it works, right? All right. So I put this in wired up. It doesn't work. I'm like, wow. So I pull it back and I put new jumpers on it and I plug it to 110 volts, 120 volts. And I check it. Guess what? Doesn't fire the solenoid, does not transfer the power, right? Transfer switch, not transferring. Try it on a new one. Same thing. So I'm like, man, there's no way I got two bad ones sitting right here in front of me. I got to order a third one. Guess what? I did. And that's the one that's in it. And that's the one that works now. So it's really weird. If you have to mess with one of these, um, I, I'm pretty heavy in diag. I'm a car mechanic for a living. So I'm used to electrical diag just with more resources. <laughs> Not a lot of resources on this. That's why I'm making the video for the next guy. All right. So now let's pull this down and I'll show you the intelligent circuit. That is part of this. And yes, I have the covers for everything. I've just got it open for display purposes. All right. So let's look at this. 
this is what I thought was a transfer switch, right? So the way it comes in is you have um, power, aux power, and uh, load. That's how it works. So that would sound like that you have shore power, aux power, which would be gen, right? And then load, which would be the RV. No, sir. Not how it works. So get that out of your head. So this is actually the front AC that is the load, right? And then the other two is um, one has a generator pull off of it and one has a um, breaker box, I think is where the other one goes. I'd have to go back and look to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So it is a transfer switch, but it is only transferring the intelligent part of load shedding, right? So it only it's, the, it's your switch for turning off stuff when load is high, which it controls the front AC, not the um, whether shore or gin, okay? So that's how that works. Um, here is the climate control computer right there. And I'm sorry, guys, I don't have my flashlight on me or I'd, I'd light this up a little bit. Um, I even replaced that. Uh, they have a thing where it will fire the heater. Mine's been doing that for years. So what I do is just disconnect power to it when I'm not using it. And if I, because you, you only need one. You either need AC or you need heat. You never need both. All right, well, so that's it. That's a good explanation of how this system works. Um, and, you know, <laughs> now I just gotta put my RV all the way back together now that I have finally fixed it all. And, you know, here is a picture of the wiring diagram, one of them, right? Uh, and it really doesn't show, this is the good one. This is the good wiring diagram because it shows that front AC. And if you trace it back, it goes back to, um, actually, no, this is not the good one. Oh, yeah, no, no, this is a good one. All right, so AC number two, which should be number one, it's in the front, but whatever. All right, it goes up to the ECC changeover. That's the one I just showed you guys, all right? And you can see the coming out of the uh, circuit panel, that one too. So, anyway, hopes it helps. It helps. Um, and uh, helps you get your RV fixed and back down the road. Thanks for watching.